Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we move on to a panel discussion titled The Advent of Marketing in a Cookie-less World. And I'd first like to welcome and introduce the members of this panel, Hitu Chavla, CMO, Microsoft India, and Nandini Dias, CEO, Lodestar UN. This panel discussion will be moderated by Alistair McEvan, Senior Vice President, Commercial Development Asia and ANZ, BBC Global News. Alistair, over to you. Thank you, Ivan, and welcome to our final session for today's Upfront, and thank you all for staying the course. Uh, over the period of the sessions we've had today so far. Uh, we've had some fascinating conversations uh, thus far, and I'm, I'm really grateful for your continued attention uh, for our final session today. My name is Alastair McEwen. I'm SVP Commercial Development for APAC for BBC Global News based in Sydney. And we have an outstanding panel today that spans, I think, 18 hours of varying time zones between Australia India and the US, uh, and I'll introduce our panelists very shortly. This session topic is entitled Marketing in a Cookieless World. And I'm going to assume for the sake of conserving time for the discussion today that our audience uh, is well read and well versed on the issues that confront the industry over the balance of the year as we all continue preparations for the deprecation of third party cookies. So let me introduce our two panelists. Uh, first up is, I'm delighted to welcome Nandin, Nandini Diaz, uh, CEO of Lodestar Universal McCam or UM. Uh, Nandini has been at the agency for 25 years and leading the business for the past eight. Uh, the agency is, of course, part of uh, the much, much bigger IPG Media Bands group. Nandini is based in Mumbai and is responsible for the business, which operates across six major cities in India with 780 media specialist staff, and they service a, a packed client roster with notable brands, including Samsung, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, Amul, Tata Motor, Mahindra, and many others. Our next panelist is Hitu Chola, uh, Chief Marketing Officer for Microsoft India. Hi, Hitu. Hitu is a 15-year veteran uh, of Microsoft. Currently based in the US, Hitu is responsible for the Microsoft India brand voice and purpose while curating experiences that support customer acquisition, retention and advocacy for its commercial and consumer businesses in India. She leads a multidisciplinary team spanning account-based marketing, industry marketing, role-based marketing, as well as customer experience, including events, social listening and digital engagement, MarTech management, marketing operations and analytics. That's a broad portfolio here too. Nandini Hitu, it's a great pleasure. Welcome to you both to today's discussion. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Very good. Um, we uh, Let's hope the technology serves us well. I'm absolutely sure it will. Um, first, I'm going to kick off uh, with Nandini. And, and uh, our, our opening question for today's session is um, about the agency's view of what this changing landscape uh, means for Lodestar UM's perspective, and, and how broadly aware are your clients of what's changing? What are the types of questions that your clients are asking you? So, uh, Alistair, for the last 20, 25 years, or third party cookies have been the mainstay across many key ad tech and martech applications. And cookies collected user information like location, device type and users' behavior on the site could be tracked. So there is no doubt that sans cookie, the industry will see fundamental changes to the way marketers connect to consumers today. Having said that, different marketers are at different stages in the digital journey, but clients with a play in digital are obviously all aware that there will be vital changes in the ecosystem. And while it's difficult to envision all the changes, by and large, the questions that come to us are, will we be able to do behavioral targeting? Will retargeting be possible? Will the DMPs or data management platforms be able to create cohorts that can later be used for activation or retargeting? On digital, one could limit the number of times an ad is shown to the same user in a given time frame, what we call frequency capping. Will that be possible? 
where the alternate routes will have the scale to match that the cookie provided or allow the same level of personalization. They worry that digital will be stripped of the ability to track and measure ROI. They're curious and concerned about the solutions that are emerging. But we all know that there have been real concerns about privacy, transparency, data ethics. So everyone gets the need for change. They get that the entire cookie list piece is still in beta stage or work in progress. And that the real success of this will be determined by the way it gets implemented and adopted. And we at agencies, of course, hope that it doesn't impact the real digital marketing space. I think we're all hopeful of that uh, fact. And you've covered off a lot of elements there, which I think we'll dive into a little bit more detail as this conversation progresses. Thank you, Nandin. Hitu, on the, on the brand side, um, what is the Microsoft approach to using data to target customers in India, which may be different from other territories? And, and how big of a discussion topic is this cookie world taking within your marketing group? Where, where does it sort of sit in your priority list? So Alistair, at Microsoft, data, secur data security and privacy is really rooted in the company's culture and DNA. And it's not just the marketer. Every employee of the company needs to be privacy compliant, and we enforce it with discipline. In fact, there's a very strong and mature internal privacy program with uh, about 300 plus privacy experts that we have across the company that drive compliance for different business units, including marketing, because mm -hmm. that's where, you know, just in terms of the... Uh, that's like the focal point in terms of customer engagement and uh, the data collection, et cetera. Because for us, customer data and customer consent, they're two sides of the same coin and something we hold at the core of everything we do. Transparency is taken very seriously uh, when we run marketing campaigns. We ensure that we have explicit customer consent for every engagement and at every touch point, be it our own websites and direct communications or even widely sponsored engagement via uh, partner platforms. Second, there's a clear mention of who would have access to that customer's data and how would it be acted upon. And last, we do not, uh, customer data is not shared with any of Microsoft's authorized, even authorized partners without customer's explicit knowledge and sign off. So it, it's, like I said, it's in the DNA and I guess being a tech provider, it just runs in, in the culture of the company. It's not a, a thing. It's not a, a thing you uh, bolt in additionally. This is how we run. Absolutely. It's, it's core to who Microsoft is as a company. 300 compliance offices sounds uh, an awful lot. I know uh, compliance on our side is very, very significant as well. But we have nothing like 300. Um, that, that's very substantial. Thank you, Hitu. Um, Nandini, coming back to you. Um, I mean, you've given us a good overview about the types of questions that clients are, are asking. At the heart of your agency, what are you doing to help those clients prepare for this cookie-less world? What are the actions that you're taking and the advice you're imparting? So I would put them into uh, four or five buckets. First, I think with third-party cookies becoming obsolete, we think first-party PII, which is personally identifiable information, and first-party cookies will become the strongest currency. And advertisers will be able to target customers through these first-party cookies collected by advertising platforms themselves, like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Flipkart. Even now, these four probably you know, get 80-85% of the digital ad spends in India. The second part of it is in India, in most cases, close to 75 to 80% of the digital traffic comes from mobile apps, which are not dependent on cookies. Considering this, the exposure of cookie-less world on our client's digital campaign will be limited to maybe not more than 30%. Of that 30%, a considerable chunk is anyway invested in lower funnel actions, such as conversions. So as we know, lower funnel requires significant focus on first party data. Hence, we've been working with all our clients and suggesting to them an audience framework, which best is best suited for their business requirement and to focus on building first party data or data partnerships. The third part of it I would talk is, we think good old CRM is gonna get traction. 
there will be an increased focus on the customer, uh, you know, the current customer database and the, all these services that CRM was providing, you know, the cross-sell, upsell, lead, gen, uh, lead generation, sales generation programs, referrals, coupons, brochures, all of this. We are now, in fact, making CRM and digital teams work really close with each other. And the fourth bucket is the new norm of effectiveness. When it comes to marketing effectiveness, it would mean close loop attribution. So you know uh, who has seen your ad and if they have purchased. We hope that it would lead to a better return from our, your ad spends. We are talking to them that there'll be new benchmarks for conversion tracking and you know the new norms need to be set uh, for the future. And uh, we are over time, we should be able to build quality customer relationships and can target people more effectively and recommend products that may make a difference to their life. So roughly these are the four buckets I would imagine the conversations are. Or That's great. That, that, that's fantastic. And uh, in, in essence, kind of going narrower, but deeper uh, into relationships, particularly with on the first party side. Thinking about first party then, uh, he too, um, what, what, what do brands like Microsoft want to see from publishers in regards to addressability solutions? So what, what, is, what does gold class look like going forward from a, from a publisher uh, brand perspective? I want to build on the theme of what both of you just said, because I think I strongly believe first party data relationships need to be enhanced for that win-win situation for everyone. Because if you get that right, it will help being rooted in consumer trust. It will improve the publisher yield and enable the market here as well to maintain and expand that addressable yield. And there are three areas that I would specifically, or rather four that I would specifically call out. Uh, first, I think the publishers need to seek permission and collect data responsibly. That is most important. They need to ask for consent directly from the users upfront, not as this fine print at the bottom, which gets missed and people don't understand. So we need to, uh, we need to be ethical about it on how we are collecting uh, that information. And they should avoid any solutions that aren't compatible with people's expectation of privacy. Second, publications, agencies, and brands need to hire and train for privacy. I just shared the data point at least uh, what we have. And because it is important that you have those SMEs who are well-versed in regulatory requirements. I mean, it's just bizarre from GDPR to CCPA. You move country to country, and if you are a multinational, you will be transacting in uh, multiple countries. So you need to have experts who understand what those regulatory requirements are. And and also at the same time, know what it means to uh, have the experience with responsible marketing approaches, uh, like first party data collection and cloud-based measurement. Third that I would call out is both publications and brands that are housing the data. They need to develop identity and access management practices for individuals according to their roles. You need to give, uh, the security access levels need to be determined for different data categories. Uh, so you, at least again, at Microsoft, we're very, we very uh, stringent about classifying data, what is highly classified, what's medium, et cetera, and which role type should access what. So that's very critical because I think all of us have read about one third of the breaches this, that happened this past year were attributed to insider threat. So that's very critical and I guess gets missed out a lot of times. And it's both a publication and a brand statement, not just a publication. And the last, I would say, as brands, we need to be mindful how we how we engage with our audience. Place ad only with publishers who have a built-in, uh, who build a consent-driven first-party relationship with their users. Do not kind of do a workaround. And if the audience signals are restricted because of cookie limitations, use the context of the ad to tailor your message instead, you know, rather than uh, kind of trying to figure out what's my alternate hack, so to say, because... At the end of the day, the reality is we need to embrace uh, a, the new trust-led ecosystem because that will automatically collate addressability and authentication at the core is what I mm -hmm. said. That, so some great pointers there. And I think it's fair to say that all publishers are on various different stages of their journey. Uh, towards uh, developing these 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 approaches, processes, and, and, and product solutions as well. 
privacy clearly very very important it's, it's what's really driving this industry change and of course that that is being marked heavily by you know the, the evolving le legislation we're seeing uh, that's driving the change itself um nandini how do we address and balance the need for addressability and attribution uh, in this privacy eccentric uh, or privacy centric ecosystem so the two are sometimes at odds with each other so as a first pass, I do believe that brands can enjoy sustainable, efficient, and effective reach while still respecting consumer privacy. But they must work more effectively with data. The way we will manage addressability, we will start using more contextual targeting, which refers to the practice of placing ads on web page based on the content of those pages. Or use more keyword targeting and that is using keywords relevant to your product or service in a website and serve appropriate ad copy to achieve a top listing in the search engines. I think both contextual advertising and keyword targeting has been around for almost two decades. And so we believe that we have the older and more privacy safe techniques to fall back on, which is the first part. Having said that, with the new setup, it appears that we will be working on cohorts instead of cookies. So I guess our planning methods will have to be rejected. We will need to work with a wider range of data sources and technology to discover consumer interest. I guess we evolve and align as we start getting more clarity on this. Coming to attribution, I think several methods are being considered and I think they're all well written about. Google has proposed that Chrome APIs will support user group level and conversion tracking and measurement. On the other hand, Apple is considering supporting opt-in deterministic attribution through the app tracking transparency framework. The ad tech players and ad agencies are evaluating partnering with media owners and what uh, you said too, and publishers to leverage on the insights and measurement. But I guess it's important to acknowledge that attribution has been a challenge for a really long time. Traditional media attribution operates more at a probabilistic level. The cookie list world will be looking for alternate ways to work out deterministic attribution. And only time can tell how the new cookie list world will address that problem. And will it be more challenging or will it actually become easier? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's certainly some, some real challenges ahead of us, but I think um, it, it's important to note that there are solutions already available that just need to be refined and pulled back in that can support the industry. Um, Okay, so look, we, we are sort of coming towards the end of our session, but I, I, I want to put a question to you both that I think is really super important and perhaps uh, more of a digital related question rather than specifically about the cookie world, which is um, running in parallel to all of the changes that we, we're seeing. There's also a shift in the way I think brands are measuring value and success against digital media investments. So Hitu, first, if I can come to you, what are the ways, what are the metrics that matter for you as a business? And how do we see meaningful and sustained change to move away from the kind of the legacy KPIs of the old digital world? What's important for, for Microsoft? I would say the problem isn't which are the right metrics, because depending on the nature of your business and the marketing mix and you know what exactly you're going after, there are plenty of effective metrics to choose from. You can choose multi-touch attribution to RCQs to uh, MMMs, or if you have even more advanced smart tech tools that support KPIs based on identity graphs or churn prediction models. There, there isn't a dearth of relevant metrics. You need to know which one depending on what exactly you're trying to do. The gap to me in most cases is marketers' ability to make the correlation between the marketing, met marketing metric and the business outcome. Yeah. How these metrics actually support the top line or drive growth for an organization. To me, that's the real gap and that is where we need to shift uh, from, from our own world of vanity KPIs, which is critical because you need to understand the performance of the investments that you're making, et cetera. But at the same time, do that to the correlation with the business. To me, choose the KPIs that can get embedded into a business dashboard, which is reviewed by a CEO or CFO. Because if you want to shift from being an ancillary fu function to a first-class citizen, 
and enable growth for the organization, that's that's how you should think about marketing KPIs. So that that would be my two cents to it. Very good, very good. And and Nandini, thank you too. Nandini, if we come to you from from an agency's perspective, and actually before we do that, if I can give you my sort of two two pence on this, I I, I would say that from the publishers perspective we see that the the kpis and the metrics that are often asked of us from the i guess the intermediary the agency community are very much based on on uh, communications uh, kpis as opposed to business outcome led kpis so from an agency's perspective how are you taking what's important for the brand assimilating that information and then sp sp pushing that back out into the, the the publisher world and what what do you want to see happen uh, for better outcomes so rightly like you said alistair most of the uh, metrics that so far were being used were most uh, you know the cost per milli or click through rates and uh, cost per lead you know retention rate website traffic those kind of stuff now uh, we are finding interesting KPIs that are emerging. And so while what uh, Hitu spoke about, you know, market mix modeling and uh, the attribution that is done at a, uh, uh, with, with advertisers with, uh, which have that kind of data because it requires a lot of data to be able to do that kind of attribution. I think the simplistic things that people are now talking to us are net promoter scores. So a lot of conversation on NPS is happening and, you know, uh, uh, the willingness of customers to recommend a company's product or service in a way is uh, uh, to an extent also attributed to digital. The second part of it is because of the whole e-com e conversation, there's a lot of conversation on return of advertising spends, the ROAS thing that we're talking, mainly on online stores and e-commerce. And so what is the kind of advertising budget that you're putting in and what's the actually revenue and outcome that is, uh, you know, taking place. And so to an extent of what you said, saying if the business outcomes are uh, being uh, uh, in a way counted with uh, online stores and e-com coming into place. But, and a third, you know, which is also emerging interesting is uh, those, uh, we used to map share of voice on keywords. And, you know, clients used to look at, now, now clients are looking at audiences and how they can get a sizable share of voice of the right audience group. And with the new cohort conversation that, uh, you know, that will take place, you know, it's not just share of voice of keywords, but share of voice of the right cohorts. So roughly, you know, in, uh, in the ad agency world, these are the kind of conversation. Needless to say, you know, multimedia attribution and uh, this are uh, things that we will, is, like the utopia and we are hoping that all the data actually comes in it's shared because you know there's so much of uh, data privacy there's such reluctance to actually share so while we are all capable of doing it i think the uh, reluctance to share data is really high so that i'm not seeing as much happening plus the uh, you know uh, uh, the ability to use that for a future thing which may change so the kind of investments that is there to create that whole platform so uh, uh, that conversation is happening, but I think the regular conversation are more on the net promoter scores and the ROAS and the share of voices yet. Very good. Thank you. Thank you both for, for, for your um, brilliant answers uh, across the range of questions I've been able to uh, put to you today. It's been a real pleasure spending time with you both. I, I'm definitely going to have to watch this back because there's so much in there that I, I want to make sure I've, I've, I've uh, heard again and got it right. And uh, you've provided our audience with uh, some really good uh, positive indicators. I think for me, clearly, um, what, what's encouraging is the positivity that the wheels are not going to fall off uh, come the end of the year, that we've got solutions. Uh, trust is very clearly a theme that um, resonates uh, strongly with the BBC, as you might expect, but uh, as an in industry, I think we all need to embrace. Um, Nandini, Hitu, my thanks to you both. Um, may you enjoy the rest of your evening, Hitu, in America, and uh, your fullness of your day, Nandini. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand back to Rahul, who will summarize our day for us uh, and uh, leaves me just to say thank you to all our audience for joining us as well. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone.